Hello, everybody. We are lifting you up in prayer right now into the very presence and the anointing of God to break every yoke on your life in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We're going to get right into the Word of God today. This is the series that everybody's been waiting on. The teaching today is deception. Number one, how, what, how do you know if you're deceived? What is deception? And number two, how to break deception. First of all, we start at the very beginning, the gospel. It says in Romans 1.16 that the gospel is what releases the power of God to get born again. And everybody says, yes, that's right. And then I ask them a question. That's important, isn't it? They always say yes. I say, well, that's important. What is the gospel? Uh, 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 that's a response I usually get. Or they come up with some uh, whim, you know, like it's the, it's the, it's the Bible. <laughs> or it's the, it's the good news. Well, okay, you're going to walk up to somebody on the street that's never heard the gospel before, and you're going to walk up and say good news? <laughs> come on now. It's more, you got to be more mature than that. So if ever, what's going to happen when you know the gospel? When you present the gospel, it releases the power of God unto salvation so people can make a decision to get born again. Isn't that wonderful? Let's go a little bit deeper here. When you share the gospel with somebody, it turns the lights on. The anointing comes, the grace comes, the power comes. You've heard all kinds of testimonies, testimonies even on here how people have shared the gospel and they've gotten born again and set free. And so... That is the, that's the power of God. Okay, now, you got to connect some things together. I know on Facebook and every, almost every church I've been to, they want to promote the cross. The cross is not where you get saved. The cross is not, it, a cross is a place of death. It's not a place of victory. Where the victory is, is in the resurrection. That's where the victory is. The Bible is real plain on this. It says that if Jesus just died on the cross, then we are still dead in our sins. You can't get any plainer than the Bible. So, well, where's the victory at? Resurrection. The resurrection. Three days later, He rose physically from the grave. That, you believe that right there? You're not going to be deceived. And you're not deceived. So if you're promoting something else... Throw it out and share just those simple steps right there. So what is the gospel? Number one, Jesus, God put Himself in Mary. Amen. He was born through a virgin. Amen. He, was, he was, uh, lived on the earth 33 and a half years. Amen. He was crucified. Praise God. Three days later, He got rose from the grave physically. Physically. If you hear, if you're getting something else that he didn't raise physically, guess what? Though you're deceived then. Throw it out. And he's now Lord and coming again. Praise God. You can rehearse those seven things no matter what you're going through, and victory is yours every time. Oh, that's good. Good, 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 good. The second thing is the Holy Spirit, all through the book of Acts. The Holy Spirit did not die. When Jesus died and the last disciples died. No, He's alive and well. And you can receive Him right now by opening up and saying, Lord Jesus, I, can, I just turn to You. And also, Lord Jesus, the Holy Spirit is not just coming in me, but He's overflowing in me with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Number three, faith. Any kind of misconception of faith, if you're not promoting faith, you're promoting something else, and the something else is deception. Just that simple. This is just this is just basic Bible teaching. Also, grace, mercy, love, forgiveness, holiness. Those are all gifts. It's not. You got to remember, change, lasting change, real change is on the inside of you. When you invite Jesus in, the Holy Spirit, God Himself, they come and sup with you. Book of Revelation all through there talks about that. Where they live in, in you. In you. In you is the power. In you is the victory. In you is righteousness. That means right standing with God. In you, see, is the desire. And also, reading the Bible. If you're not a daily Bible reader with speaking in tongues, speaking in the Spirit, you're deceived. You're walking deception. There's the, the fullness of 
of God and the fullness of the blessing will never happen in your life to the degree that it could be if you fullness of the blessing. Now, this right here. How do you break it? What are you doing besides those four things, four or five things that I mentioned? Oh, I'm rubbing ropes. I'm rubbing beads. I'm wearing beanie hats. Where in the Bible does it say that's going to renew your mind, Romans 12? It doesn't. It's not going to renew your mind. It's just some religious practices to keep you occupied so you can miss when Jesus shows up. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. Uh, I know that the people you hang around with practice all that stuff. Well, they're my friends. and I'm telling you, they're going to be your friends when you go down too instead of up. Okay, but you won't know them. You won't be around them. So what do you want to do? You want to get in the Word of God. It says, well, what was the purpose of the beanie hats and the shawls and the rubbing ropes and putting prayers in a box and putting it on their head and getting bread and putting it in a box behind the, where the priest is you know, doing his thing out front there? What's the purpose of all that? you got to remember, a lot of stuff that people is doing nowadays, especially with the rubbing of rolls, rubbing beads and all this kind of stuff, that's all outward appearance stuff. You say it again. That's all outward appearance stuff. And the Bible says, forget that stuff. Real change is on the inside of you when you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. Then you're born again. The Bible says you must be born again. It doesn't say anything about you must rub, rub ropes or you must recite or you must you know, wear a hat or a robe or a, none of that. It's just, it's just all religion. Hoopla, junk is all it is. It's not going to change your life forever because it real change is on the inside. The commandments are on the inside with Jesus. The love walk is on the inside. When you get sensitive to Him, it comes out. Now, how do you break it? How do you break deception in your life and maybe some friends' lives too, your family? Ephesians, the first chapter, will break it. Just like that. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 16 and 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will give unto you or them, you can put their name right in there, give unto them the spirit of wisdom. You break it with the spirit of wisdom, which is the Word of God. You break it with the spirit of wisdom, which is the Word of God. That's never going to change. Okay? It says, well, what was the Old Testament laws for and everything? You've got to remember that's all they had. But when the Savior came, when the Savior came, now you receive the Savior inside of you and the change comes. The greatest deliverance you can ever have is from yourself. Your self-goofiness in your head. I mean, you, get, you start walking in the light of the Word and, and you'll start thinking, man, how in the world could I ever believe those goofy things? It's because change is within he was trying to change with all the outward stuff. Stop this, quit this, cut that off, die to that, stop this, change this, don't wear that, don't wear this, don't wear, don't wear, put this on, don't put that on, don't do this. That's all outward stuff. True holiness is a gift. It's a gift and the real change happens on the inside. Amen, Isn't that wonderful? So get dig in that, dig in there again. Ephesians, how to break it. This is how to break uh, the deception, Ephesians, and also uh, Romans, the 12th chapter, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your spiritual act of worship. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And verse 3 says you're renewing your mind of faith because everyone's given a measure of faith. You renew your mind to that. You work on your faith muscles and you'll grow, grow, grow. Amen. You can't grow anything no matter what it is, even a daily disease. You keep working that faith, your faith muscles will grow and squelch whatever it is that's trying to make you squelch in Jesus' name. So look in Ephesians now, first chapter, verse 16 and 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ will give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge of Jesus, that the eyes of your understanding is enlightened and you'll know what the hope you're calling is an exceedingly great power that works on the inside of you. You see that? Well, what is that power? It's the anointing. They're the anointing without. I've seen so many ministers that just, they, the anointing comes on them, and man, they're just, it's just flowing in God. 
But then that anointing is just to minister, and it, you get some benefit out of it too. But it lifts that the anointing within Ephesians, the first chapter 16 and 17, that that anointing within you, that power he's talking about there, that anointing within you is what causes you to change. It's for you. You can't even give it away. It's just for you. So, Father God, we thank you right now that the anointing within side of these people right now, it breaks every yoke. And, it's there, and as they do, Romans, the 12th chapter, in those first three verses, and as they pray those, and as they do uh, the, the first part there of, of Ephesians, the first chapter, 16 and 17, the great things happen. Now, don't go away because I'm going to pray for your finances. Number one prayer request right now, is we've had so many testimonies of great things happening in finances as we pray. So that's the address. You can send it right there. And it'd be a blessing to you. Right, right in the memo. I'm not deceived anymore. Amen. Right, right in the memo. And then also write a prayer request out so we can agree with you in prayer. I lay my hands on them. I pray over them. I believe... God, that you will never have another day of lack as long as you live. Amen. It's what I'm believing and trusting God. But you got to sow your seed to do that. It don't just fall on you like ripe cherries off a tree. So sow your seed and be blessed today. We pray for your physical body. All pain be gone. All diseases die. Glaucoma disappear. In Jesus' name. Freedom. Freedom, 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 freedom. You have seen some places that you're deceived today. You've been promoting other things other than the Gospel, the Holy Spirit. And uh, you need to get back on track. You're getting back on track right now. You've repented from it. And start feeding your faith and everything else will die off. Faith is a safe place. Amen. Be blessed today. Amen. Receive your holiness today. It's a gift. Receive your mercy. Don't receive condemnation, guilt, anxiety, and worry, and diseases. No, don't, don't receive those shortcomings. Don't receive those. Receive the blessings of God. The number one way that people walk in victory is because they know who they are in Christ Jesus. And the only way you're going to know, you can go on any tablet, internet, internet service, and just say, In Him Scriptures, or Inheritance Scriptures. And it'll come up a list on there. There's 139 verses of Scripture in the New Testament that tells you who you are in Christ. Sing them, write them, put them on cards, whatever you got to do. Write, underline them in your Bible, red mark or yellow, however you do it. And go over them. Say, no, this is me. Greater is He that's in me than he that's in the world. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Amen, amen. You remember three episodes ago, we shared a whole devotional time that we prayed with our American president and uh, even before he was president. Well, we've seen the fulfillment of it. We've seen the fulfillment of it. He has a clean bill of health. Now, we've been praying. Uh, we, we said anything new to us. The Lord had started having us pray a couple of years before he even became president. Amen. So whatever you want to think about that, you can. But I'm telling you, the Word of God works. Because we would pray Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against him will prosper, and every tongue will rise up against is condemned. Amen. And Isaiah 53, 5, by his stripes were yeah, your by his stripes he's healed. And first Peter 2 24, by his stripes you were healed. So if you were healed, you are healed. And Matthew 8, 17, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses, and by our by his stripes were healed. So we started doing that uh, a couple of years before our president. Uh, was running, was still running, was still running to be president. So we already knew there was something going to happen. We didn't know, but we knew we took the power out of it because we'd already been praying it for years. <laughs> Amen. So I just rejoice, and we and, and I know that uh, we rejoice with you about your healing and being set free too. Amen. Don't wish harm on nobody because that's witchcraft. <laughs> Somebody needs to get set free from that. That's a deception too. So be free now. Recite who you are in Christ Jesus, not recite who you don't want to be. Amen. Recite who God says you are. That's the real you. Amen. Have a good one. Be blessed now.